show. We are up and rolling. And um, my name is Howard Thompson, as you know. And uh, if you can, share a bit brief about the show. Um, in, in terms of what, my name is uh, Cedric Lewis. Um, I'm currently a, a guest lecturing professor at Grove City College. I'm formerly a um, assistant course director, associate course director at Full Sail University. Uh, I have uh, been a practicing attorney um, within the uh, business, uh, corporate business and entertainment fields. Um, I am uh, currently uh, CEO of Stan Production, uh, which is a, um, a faith-based uh, TV and, and um, film production company okay. uh, studio that we started. Um, and we're doing some, some interesting things in, um, in faith-based films. Uh, and some uh, family-oriented uh, comedies and dramas, as well as some talk shows. Um, we're doing that in association with um, um, with a, um, an internet TV station mm-hmm. um, a company, actually. That, that um, I also am part of that, uh, and so we're trying to put some some good quality uh, content out there using some some of the new uh, mediums that are out there, All uh, right. in, in terms of the internet, um, in terms of Roku. Uh, and and mobile apps. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Um, first question, uh, on a typical day in your field of work, uh, what do you do? <laughs> I, I don't have any typical days anymore. <laughs> um, I have a, because I'm so involved in so many things, uh, my days are filled with things. Uh, for instance, today um, I was finalizing a new course mm-hmm. so I'm on lectures for part of my day okay. uh, and doing research um, to make sure that I'm, I'm bringing current information to my students um, there's always something that I can learn and I want to make sure they're getting the most up-to-date information um, I spent part of my day today working on um, a uh, marketing idea um, and, and uh, a new organizational structure for a uh, startup uh, specialty foods company in, in California uh, that I'm just doing some consulting work with. Um, I spent part of my day um, today um, put working on um, a marketing plan for um, a new book uh, that we're putting out. Um, um, let's see, what else have I done just today? Um, uh, there's administrative stuff. Work, talk to one of my other partners about uh, working on some financing for another company that we're doing. Okay. Um, my days typically start at about 6 a.m., give or take, and I will probably consistently work until maybe 11, 12 o'clock tonight. Great, great. Busy man. Gotta love it. Uh, next question. What training or education is required for your work? Um, you know, I, from a formal standpoint, um, I have a bachelor's degree in marketing. That's where I started. Uh, everything off that. Um, I did go on and get a, a law degree. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something that's required for my work, but it's certainly come in quite handy, uh, even though I don't practice full time anymore. Okay. Um, I always um, using use that knowledge every day. Uh, and also the, the, um, the critical um, thinking skills okay. um, are always important. Um, in my, I have a master's in MBA in finance. Um, so those things come in handy. Um, and then just the, the entrepreneurial skills that we teach um, okay. all come in, into play. Uh, really kind of thinking outside the box. I do consulting for small businesses. So, um, you know, this, this company I'm working with now is a perfect example of a, a small business doing, doing some big numbers, uh, but really focusing on keeping things small, very close uh, to the chest, you know, cutting out a lot of the extra unnecessary overhead. They've identified their market. Um, and really kind of nix themselves very well. Um, there are some, some ways that they can grow, but they know that they don't want to do that just yet. So they're focusing on staying and taking a larger share of that smaller market where they are, and then we're setting up plans to roll out five, ten years from now. So a lot of things that we talked to you guys in undergrad uh, in terms of proper planning, uh, they've gone through just like in Final Project when you went through um, your feasibility study. Um, those my clients do those studies. You know, they lay out those details. We go out five years, and we go out, you know, ten years. 
looking at where can I grow in order for me to get to that point? How, what do I need? What are the steps in between that I've got to hit? So we set those milestones and a couple of times a year we go back and review them. Um, so the same things that I teach you guys are the things that I personally use every day. Great, great. Very successful, very successful in what you do. Um, what personal qualities are important for to be successful at your job? Um, I, I, perseverance, definitely. Um, uh, a lot of, of hard work, um, research. I know that uh, there's always something else that I can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm constantly doing research. Um, I'm constantly on LinkedIn and in, in platforms and chat rooms with other uh, professionals that are in these fields because there's stuff that they know that I don't know or there are things that are changing in the market so that I can stay up on what's going on. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning something myself every day. Um, it helps to, to, to be somewhat organized. That's something that, that I have to work on every day. Um, there's not enough hours in the day. So having a, a good schedule, a good, good, um, good organizational skills are important, especially when you multitask like I do, mm -hmm. um, where you have those days where you don't feel like you've got nothing done, but you've been running for, for 18 hours. Yeah. Uh, and that's frustrating. Um, so, so definitely being organized. Um, like I said, being open to new ideas. Um, you know, I, I know that there are certain ways that I like to do things. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I don't know everything. So I have to listen to my partners. I have to listen to uh, my business associates uh, when they have ideas uh, and figure out what can I take from that and, and, and what makes sense. So it may change what I'm, what I'm doing or it may um, strengthen, you know, what I truly believed in the beginning. But I don't know that until I've, I've listened to everyone. So having an open mind, I think, is, is also a very important skill. Great. Great. I, I completely agree with you on being organized and uh, being a very hard worker means the world. Uh, what do you think of the experience you've had thus far in terms of the entertainment field as a whole? Um, you know, the entertainment field is, is interesting. Um, it, it's tough in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of competition out there. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's got a dream of being in this industry in some way, in some form. Um, so there are a lot of people that are out there that um, that, that you're competing against. Um, it is very much a relationship um, industry. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to spend some time strengthening those relationships. Um, the interesting thing about that is sometimes to get those relationships, um, you kind of step got to step outside your comfort zone. So you okay. got to put yourself out there okay. um, in, in ways that, that you normally wouldn't. Um, you know, but in terms of making an introduction, just introduce yourself and um, being available. Um, this this film industry is something that's a little new to me, um, so I had to, to learn some things. Um, okay. I had to watch some experts. Luckily, um, again, you know, using those networks, I had some uh, some friends that were that were very in the industry. I had a fraternity brother uh, who's a noted director and producer, so I got to sit down and pick his brain and say, hey. I'm, I'm thinking about doing this. What are some things I need to be aware of? What are some things I need to know? Uh, who are some people that I need to know? Um, and he was able to sit me down for a couple of hours and just really go through some things with me that helped me along my way. Uh, I'm constantly reading, so staying up on what's current in this field, especially on, on, on the trends, uh, especially on the marketing aspect, um, is important, too. Um, you got to have a little bit of luck. Um, but then you definitely have to to, to, to keep your nose to it. Um, you know, we always hear the big story of the people who um, were discovered or were successful on their first try in this industry. Uh, and those are the ones that are glorified by how quick that happened. Yeah. But you don't hear about or don't think about so much the hundreds of thousands of people who grinded for years and years and years um, to build out um, a successful career. I have a good friend of mine uh, from college who's an actor. Uh, and, and he started really pursuing his career when we were in college now, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, graduated in 1997. Okay. And it's just over the past five years that he's been working little bit by little bit consistently. It's over the last five years, his career's really kind of taken off. Uh, and so he's doing network TV. He's been on uh, NCIS and he's been on uh, several soap operas just in the last week. And uh, he just did a stint on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, but he was grinding for 10 years, you know, getting a living day in and day out before he started to see some of his success. Um, 
And those are the people that keep me motivated because he said, you know, this is my dream. I'm going to keep working on my craft. I'm going to keep getting better. I'm going to keep better, getting better at it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to persevere. I'm not going to stop uh, working on my dream until he, he got to that point where he, he kind of made it. Um, so those are people that I'm always learning from. And that, that perseverance, I think, in this, this industry in particular uh, is, is an absolute quality that you have to have. It may not happen overnight. In most cases, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but you've got to keep grinding uh, and, and stay at it. Interesting. Um, what parts of your work do you find most satisfying and challenging as well? Uh, I, I find the challenge itself to be satisfying. Okay. Uh, I, I, I like um, I like the, the thought of building something from nothing. Um, I like being the underdog. Um, I like doing something that someone told me I couldn't do. Yeah. Especially if it's something that I believe in, and I only try to get involved with in things that I truly, truly believe in. Same here. Um, so learning new markets, meeting new people, um, learning new techniques, all that stuff um, keeps me motivated, keeps me excited. I get bored easily. Um, so, so those new challenges, um, they do excite me. Um, they can be exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you will complain about them. <laughs> um, but those are the things that, that really keep me motivated. Okay. I can, I can agree with you. I love challenges myself. Uh, what entry jobs are best for learning as much as possible, do you think? Uh, entry job. Well, I, you know, I, I'm always a big advocate of, of internships. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's it's interesting. Um, we when People look at internships like, oh, I'm not going to work for free. What are you, what are you saying? But uh, especially in this industry, you know, it goes back to those those relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, by putting yourself out there, even if it means doing it for free, you're getting exposed uh, and you're getting your foot in the door where other people can't get to. Okay. You're seeing how things work behind the scenes. Uh, and it's more than just, okay, I'm here. You know, I hate getting up here. They're going to make me go get coffee. That's fine. But while you're not getting coffee, you're in the room. And when you're in the room, you're listening. You're taking notes. You're learning. You're watching how people react, how they interact with one another. And those are things that they can't teach you in a classroom. Yeah. You have to get out there and do it. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge advocate of, of, of internships. Um, I think, you know, where you can, you get out and uh, surround yourself with people that are doing it. Um, and the key part of that is the people that are doing it, not just talking about doing it. Okay. Um, so, you know, like I said, sometimes you got to put yourself uh, out there, uh, even where you're not comfortable in, in terms of meeting some people. Um, but you want to spend some time with the people who are actually where you want to get to. Uh, and so sometimes you may have to do something for free to get there. Indeed. Um, so that's it. Uh, you know, we all have to pay our bills. So you got to do what you got to do to support your family, to pay your bills and do that. Um, and, you know, you may have to do those nine to five jobs. You know, I know people right now that are talented. Like I said, that my friend uh, Martinez, who's an actor, you know, like I said, I know he, he worked, uh, you know, as a, an assistant in a talent agency, you know, his, he, he was a secretary for the guy who was his agent now. Okay. You know, he did what he had to do to pay his bills. He worked security on the back lot or one of the studios, you know, whatever I got to do to pay my nine to five, I'm going to do that. But when I'm not doing that, I'm going to workshops. I'm going to, you know, I'm going from this paying job to this free job because this free job opened up an opportunity for me. You know, one of the jobs he took was an internship for a, um, a screenwriter. Uh, screenwriting agent, excuse me, okay. literary agent. So working with that that screen that agent, he got to know what they were looking for in scripts, and he was writing some scripts himself. So he learned what those agents were looking for when they were signing new screenwriters, uh, and it helped him put together a couple of pilots. Uh, because he was there and exposed, and while looking at those scripts all the time, screening them for that screenwriter, he got some of his first parts. Definitely. Because he had his hand on the script, and he said, oh, I know I could do this character. That's neat. Uh, so, you know, putting yourself out there in, in those situations where you can make some things happen for yourself, that, that's important. Okay. So I definitely, definitely an internship in this industry where you can get them, yeah. I'm looking for an intern myself. Uh, as we're moving on, how do you see jobs in the field of entertainment changing in the future? Um, I mean, entertainment is such a broad term. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we're seeing huge advances in technology um, in, in terms of music and even even in terms of film. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, outside of that, from from the distribution in, um, you know, technology is huge. You're going from, you know, it used to be I've got a movie out, uh, and I can only go see it in in, in the movie theaters. Okay. Uh, and then I may have domestic distribution now. I may have some foreign distribution. Yeah. But now I've got you know on demand distribution. I've got to worry about. Uh, I've got contracts I may have with Netflix that I've got to to, to worry about. In addition to my normal DVD sales, I've got Blu-ray sales. I've got to have an Xbox contract. Um, so all those things are starting. That technology starting to bring things, open up a lot of doors and a lot of opportunity. Um, so I think that that's huge. Um, you know, I used to just promote on a movie poster, a radio ad. Uh, you know, now I've got Facebook. I've got Twitter. I've got Instagram. Yeah. You know, I've got mine. I've got an app. You know, I've got my normal web page. I've got. Uh, links in from other web pages. I got YouTube. Um, so uh, I think technology is really changing um, this industry and opening up some doors also because with that technology, you've also got the ability for the little guy that, that, that's active and just and that's um, innovative to mm-hmm. do some of the same things now that, that the big studios could do, that the, the big uh, record companies could do. You've seen the music industry change so much where independent artists are, are huge. You know, I, I'm looking at um, an article the other day, you know, they're talking about Brian Lewis and Macklemore, you know, you got those people that say, you know, oh man, those guys, you know, your hardcore hip hop fans, so those guys are clowns. They're looking at those guys and say, oh, yeah. those guys gave you a blueprint for an independent artist. Everything they tell you to do as an independent artist, those guys did. Mm-hmm. You know, the labels wouldn't touch them. They said, fine, we don't want to touch the labels. We're going to do this ourselves. I said, well, you may laugh. You don't have to like their, their music from a business standpoint. Yeah. Those guys were dead on point. Um, and that's a, that was a huge change in this industry because you couldn't do that 20 years ago. You had to be signed to a label. Yeah. And they ran things. And now you, you, you're seeing some really great music and great new artists coming out now because they're not limited by just signing with a major. Agree. Agree. Um, how do you, how do the current economic conditions affect your business? Oh, <laughs> Uh, it's definitely made it tough. Um, you know, raising raising funds uh, yeah. in this economy is tough. Uh, you know, ten years ago, uh, you know, you could pick up a phone call with the right people and right reputation and pull together five million dollars for a job. Now, trying to pull together fifty thousand dollars is like pulling teeth. You got to yeah. get not your first child, but your first, second, and third child uh, to get it. People just aren't lending money anymore. Um, crowdfunding is interesting. Um, because it's opening up some doors. I'm curious to see how that market's going to go, mm-hmm. uh, especially now that the SEC is getting involved uh, and doing more regulation on it. Um, if they do that wrong, it can hurt that market um, because it's going to keep the, the, the middle guys out, um, uh, the little little guys out, and, and you're back to those accredited investors and you're back to the, the power of the, the, you know, the 2%. Mm-hmm. Um, I think crowdfunding opened up uh, was a major uh, milestone in, in small business financing, and I hope it, it continues. I hope they don't mess that up. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is is, is finding proper funding uh, in the current economy. Um, the entertainment industry, like I said, is one of the few that, um, while you you see some hits in certain certain some certain aspects, certain fields of it, mm-hmm. uh, as a whole, I think it's growing. Uh, I think people always still want to be entertained. Um, they may be a little more discriminating with their disposable dollar. Okay, um, but some of it is always going to go to entertainment. So as a as a say as an overall field, I think it's probably one of the best you could be in right now. That's good to know. Uh, with the information you have about my education, skills, and experience, what other fields do or jobs rather would you suggest I research further before making a final decision? Um, I, I mean, I think you know from. Uh, you can do marketing for anything, okay? Uh, I think you, you've got that vision uh, to do that, and I think you have the hard work to do that. Um, so whether it be just music, um, if you go, but even if you go into mainstream advertising, mm-hmm. uh, I think you have the, the skill set to do that. Um, I think you have the skill set to do guerrilla marketing. Uh, like I said, you may niche yourself out and say, okay, I want to go with small and medium-sized firms that can't afford a big New York advertising agency. Uh, but I've got some great ideas on some guerrilla marketing uh, front that I can uh, get you the marketing exposure that you need at a reduced price and still make a, a reasonable amount of money for myself, too, um, which is always a win-win for everybody. 
Um, so I think marketing in general is always going to be a great field for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to stay in the, in the management field, um, you know, you've got that experience there um, in, in terms of how to put a business together. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've got a lot of open doors there. You have, because of the entrepreneurial skill set you have, you have the ability to go into a number of other areas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got, you've got that touch with you. Um, that's the biggest thing. You know, the traditional business model, going to business school, getting a degree in marketing or getting a degree in finance uh, is, is great for, 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 for Wall Street and general corporate America. Uh, but I think it's important to have those additional entrepreneurial skills, that additional um, way of thinking outside the box mm-hmm. um, that, that pays dividends in, in any field, no matter what your background is. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what special advice would you give a person in a, in, entering the music field or the film industry? Um, again, be, be realistic. Okay. Um, be, be, be realistic from the standpoint of knowing it may take some time. Mm-hmm. Not that it can't be done. Not that you can't do it because you have to go... I'm always going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but know that it's not going to happen tomorrow. Okay. Chances are that it's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, know that you're going to have to pay your dues. I know that coming in, you think I'm the greatest artist there is, I'm the greatest manager, I'm the greatest songwriter there is, I'm the greatest scriptwriter there is. And you may very well be. But you still have to not only work at it, but you've got to have those connections. You've got to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and sometimes that may take a little more than three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that that's just it. Just having having your head on straight and positive, understanding that you still have an uphill battle to, to climb. Mm-hmm. And if you climb it faster than most, that's great. But if not, you'll still get to the top. You just have to keep keep being um, persistent. Thank you. Uh, I remember you telling me once, um, it's not always what you know, but whom you know. You know that has always stuck with me. Uh, final question, sir. If you could do do things all over again, would you choose the same path for yourself? Why? And would you change anything? You know, that, that, that's a tough question from the standpoint of, you know, we always think about uh, the struggles that we go through in life. And, oh, man, I wish I hadn't have done that or, or, or I should have done that. And, and it's, it's easy to say that I would, I would change this, that, or the other. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, how, no matter how difficult life can be sometimes, those experiences happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a man of faith. Me too. Okay? And I think there's a, a, a direction, uh, the, a path that God has for us uh, that we don't always understand. So I think every experience that I've gone through, whether good or bad, has prepared me in some way for something that's come later on. So I'm going to uh, so from that standpoint, you know, no, I, I wouldn't change that. Uh, no one likes to, to, to live through the tough times, mm-hmm. uh, but those tough times strengthen you. They teach you things about yourself. They teach you things about people. Um, and then how you handle it, how you come back from that, teaches you a lot about yourself, too. So from, from that standpoint, I, I don't think I would change, change my path from that. Indeed, I completely agree with everything you just said. Uh, well, that would be it. I truly appreciate you for granting me some of your time. And um, I'll be soon to catch up with you soon. Okay, we'll do that. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. All right, you too. Bye-bye.